What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and today we're going to talk through my eight must-start players for week four of the fantasy football season, but it's going to be a little bit different, okay? This is going to be a new video format that I am going to call our starts and stats for the week. You guys absolutely love, and I love making them, the top 10 lessons learned videos on Monday, where I pretty much break down all of the stats and all the numbers from the week that just happened. So this is going to be the opposite or the inverse version where we're going to look through the stats for the upcoming week and try and do some projection and some prediction. So today we have my eight must start players. And pretty much what I did is I found the eight players that I have ranked higher than consensus. So I had my week four rankings I made yesterday on Thursday. I compared that to the expert consensus rankings on fantasy pros. And I found the eight players I'm higher on than consensus. And then I did some digging on why I'm higher than consensus and why I like these players more than the other analysts out there. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you get down below, subscribe, leave a like, let's go. So I will say this is going to be a work in progress. Let me know if you have any constructive criticism for this format, let me know. I think that you guys are going to enjoy this video format. I will say we're doing eight must-start players this week. I wouldn't mind in the future doing like five starts and five sits. Just overall stats that I found interesting for the week and sort of to help you go through your start-sit decisions. Now, first up, I'll be honest, this isn't going to be the prettiest graphic show of all time. We kind of just have a Google Doc sheet here, but I wanted to make sure I'm giving you guys as much information as possible. First up here, we have Jalen Waddle and we have Devon A-Chain as our must-starts. Now, of course, Jalen Waddle is a guy who you're probably going to start anyways, but uh, there's a couple of these guys that are a little bit of the higher end that I want to give you a nudge forward to get these guys into your lineup. As we get further, you guys will see, we're going to get pretty nasty and pretty in the weeds here towards the end of the video, but we're going to start with the higher end guys here. So you have Jalen Waddle and Devin A. Chain. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a loaded screenshot here, right? Just simply have Jalen Waddle, I'm four spots higher than consensus, or no, I'm not. It shouldn't be four. I, expert consensus rankings has him as wide receiver 19. I'm at wide receiver 13 in my ranking. So that's going to be a six spot uh, advantage. So I'm actually more than that plus four. It should be plus six there. And then Devin A. Chain, consensus 25. He is my RB 21. I'm four spots higher than consensus. They're in Buffalo. Their team total, which is just based on the over under in the game. You can take the spread, find what Vegas is implying each team to score and see which offenses are supposed to score the most. So they have the six highest team total of the week three-point underdogs in Buffalo. And the stat here for these two players is that Jalen Waddle in 2022 had the six most explosive catches among all wide receivers. Devin A. Chain currently leads all running backs in explosive play rate, and the Bills have allowed the third highest explosive play rate in the NFL. This game also has an over-under of 53.5, the highest of the week expect fireworks. So again, Waddle a chain two guys that are just really explosive players going up against a defense in the bills that allow explosive a lot of explosive plays and in a game environment that should have a lot of points now Jalen waddle is coming off of a concussion but i really wouldn't be concerned there tom chris we have him on every saturday for an injury update show he wrote this on Jalen waddle this week waddle practice fully wednesday putting him on track to play in week four and he said fantasy impact we do not expect any decline in fantasy production when players return from a concussion so don't if that's a, pi a pitch count uh efficiency knock or anything he should be ready to go Jalen waddle in an awesome matchup i don't know why he's not a top 15 wide receiver by consensus and then devin h and people love to say oh well devin h was out there in garbage time last year whatever whatever i just said or last week but that just certainly wasn't the case he you can see this is a really cool chart from hayden winks where he shows when running backs play in the game. And you can see Devin A. Chain's the green name there. He played a ton in the second quarter, first quarter. Now, of course, he plays more in like the third quarter than uh, Raheem Mostert towards the end of the game. But they were splitting touches early on. He is going to be a focal point of this offense or a component of this offense, even when it's a competitive game. So I think Devin A. Chain is also liable to have an absolute monster game. I just want pieces of this offense and pieces of this game environment. And I know people are a little bit hesitant to start Devin A. Chain after last week. They're like, uh, it was, a, was it a fluke? Was it a flash in the pan? If you have somebody in your lineup like a Damian Pierce, a Najee Harris, a Khalil Herbert, these guys who have been really tough to start recently, a Tyler Algier, fire up Devin A. Chain. He's my running back 21 this week. I think that he is in a really nice spot. And this might just be the start of Devin Achen being an every week starter in fantasy football. Now, our next player, our third must start of the week 
is Ramondre Stevenson. He is my RB12. He's consensus RB16. I'm four spots higher than consensus. He's going into Dallas, 18.5 team total, which is 28th in the NFL. So not supposed to score a ton. They're six and a half point underdogs. They're going to be playing from behind here. And the stat is Dallas is one of 11 teams allowing a 20% target share to running back. Shout out JJ Zacharyson for his data dump. And then on the other side, Ramondre Stevenson is one of eight running backs running a route on 60% or more of their team drop back. So this is going to be a tough environment where the Patriots aren't going to score a ton of points, but they're going to be behind. And Dallas actually funnels a lot of their targets to the running back position. And Ramondre Stevenson runs a lot of routes and plays a lot in the receiving game for the Patriots. So he's had a little bit of a quiet start to the season. I think a lot of people are going to see Dallas Cowboys on the schedule and be like, oh my God, this is the best defense in the NFL. They weren't that great last week against the Cardinals. I actually think there's going to be plenty of running back targets to go around here. Six and a half point underdogs. The Patriots, I believe, lead the NFL in no huddle rate. They're going to be playing fast from behind, passing the football. And that is the exact game environment that you want for Ramondre Stevenson. Now, our fourth player and stat here is Nico Collins. He is going to be at home versus Pittsburgh. He is the consensus wide receiver 31. He is my wide receiver 25. I am six spots higher than consensus on Nico Collins this week. He is going to be at home, only the 25th highest team total, three-point underdogs. But the Steelers have allowed the fifth most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers, one of which being Levi Wallace. And Levi Wallace has... I was about to say something else, but I should just read the stat off the paper. That was so dumb. One of which being Levi Wallace, who is one of nine cornerbacks to allow 200-plus yards on the year. Nico Collins finds himself projected for the most snaps for a Steelers weak link at cornerback this week. So you can see Levi Wallace, one of nine corners to allow 200 plus receiving yards this season, most on that entire Steelers team. And then PFF has this thing where they project out how many snaps each wide receiver is going to see against each corner. And you can see Nico Collins has 24 projected snaps against Levi Wallace. Not only the most snaps projected against Levi Wallace, but the most projected snaps among any wide receiver versus any other corner in that matchup. So Nico Collins primarily is going to be covered by Levi Wallace, who has not been good. The Steelers haven't been good against wide receivers. And I fully expect, with Laramie Tunsil not playing this week, that the offensive line is going to really struggle against the Steelers' front. They're not going to be able to run the ball in the Steelers. And they're going to be probably coming from behind against a Steelers team that actually runs with a lot of pace and tempo and runs a lot of plays here. So I kind of like the Texans playing from behind here, airing it out to Nico Collins. I know it was Tank Dell last week, but I do think it, was, it, it is going to be time for Nico Collins in week four. Now, our fifth must-start player is going to be Marquise Brown. Now, he is going to be in San Francisco. He is the expert consensus wide receiver 38. He is my wide receiver 31. I am seven spots higher than consensus. I will say I get the pessimism, though, right? They are, they have the 32nd team total. They're 14-point underdogs, but that's actually a good thing for the receiving game where they're going to be behind the entire game and the 49ers opponents are passing the ball 64% of the time in neutral situations, which is the highest rate in the NFL. You can see here, this is a Hayden Wings chart. At the top of this neutral pass rate chart, it's the 49ers. They are forcing their opponents to pass the ball a ton. Their defensive front is way too good. And the Cardinals on the road as 14-point underdogs will have to pass the ball a ton in this game. Surprisingly, the 49ers allow the 10th most adjusted fantasy points to wide receivers. Marquise Brown is 13th in the NFL with a 30% target prop run. A PPR game is incoming. So pretty much what I'm saying, Josh Dobbs has been a top 15 quarterback this season. They are on the road versus the 49ers. Huge, huge underdogs are going out to pass the ball a ton. And I think Marquise Brown is going to be the main beneficiary of that. You also have to remember Trevon Diggs out for this game and for the season. Marquise Brown to me, I like him to get six plus catches and just be a nice PPR play. Again, he's my he's wide receiver three here, right? Wide receiver 31, but you can start Marquise Brown with some confidence here. Now, we are really, really, really sticking our necks out with these next two here. And I just want to give you guys some hope. I just want to give you guys some hope. We have Drake London and Kyle Pitts here. Now, these guys aren't ranked in a spot where they are must must start so especially drake london kyle pitts is a guy to me i have him as my tight end eight this week he's consensus tight end 11 i'm three spots higher than consensus pretty much what i'm saying with kyle pitts is unless if you have one of the elites right unless if you have kittle kelsey but it's like even in one tight end leagues or non-tight end premium leagues you're not going to have you know kittle kelsey andrews ahead of Pitts. so if you have any of the studs ahead of Pitts, 
play him. But you don't have to go dumpster diving for your Jake Ferguson's, your Zach Ertz. You can fire up Kyle Pitts this week. Then we have Drake London, who is the consensus wide receiver 45. He is my wide receiver 39. I'm six spots higher than consensus, but that's still a flex play, right? Wide receiver 39 is still where I have him. I have 38 wide receivers ahead of London. I just happen to be higher on London. So what I'm trying to say is London, I know the title division must start, but it's, it's just to draw you guys in. Like I said, we're going to get deeper as we go. These aren't as much must starts as they are more sneaky starts. If you're in a tough spot, you can put these guys in your lineup. Drake London, I actually like this week. Now, when we talk about this game, it's going to be in London or at least overseas. I don't know if this is the Germany game or not. I don't think it is. But the Falcons have the 24th highest team total. Not supposed to score a ton of points here. Three-point underdogs. Now, the interesting part is the Jaguars are a pass-funnel team, right? Remember, the Falcons, the issue with the Falcons, they don't pass the ball enough. They have a pretty tough passing game there. But this is a good spot here because, again, the Jaguars have a have been a pass-funnel this year due to their top three rush defense with opponents passing the ball 5.8% more than expected, second highest in the NFL. Now, what's that re that's referencing is this chart to the right of me. Shout out to Sam Hoppin for this chart. But you can see if you go down to uh, pass rate over expectation, so PROE, the Falcons have the dead last pass rate over expectation in the league, whereas the Jaguars opponents have the second highest in the NFL. So the Falcons are usually minus 9.8% pass rate over expectation. Jaguars opponents are actually 5.8%. Now, that's going to meet somewhere in the middle and cause the Falcons to have to pass the ball more than they would like to, which is good for us in fantasy for these pass catchers. Now, the Jaguars also allow the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends and the fifth most fantasy points to wide receivers lined up out wide. That's a stat from the 33rd team here where you can see I just sorted by fantasy points to wide receivers lined up out wide, which is where Drake London always plays. He's an X wide receiver fifth most in the entire NFL. So you have two spots here. Again, the Jaguars allowing the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends, the fifth most fantasy points to wide receivers lined up on the outside, both soft spots. Now, I don't think both of these guys are going to get home, but I like for my money's worth one of these guys to get home between Kyle Pitts and Drake London. They should have to pass a lot. Again, of course, they're underdogs. They had 39 pass attempts last week, but that was against a Detroit Lions defense. We just saw on Thursday night, they were really good. That's a good defense. Brian Branch is a dog. Aiden Hutchinson's a dog. I think a lot of us were sort of thinking that the Lions were same old, same old defense after the Seahawks game. But since then, shut down Arthur Smith, shut down LaFleur, two guys who call very good offenses in my eyes. I think those are very good play callers there. And Detroit has now shut them down. So the Falcons last week passing more was actually a huge positive. They just couldn't get anything going against a good Detroit Lions defense. Now again, this Jaguars defense third best run defense they are bottom 10 in epa per play when it comes to drop back so again they have this pass funnel type defense where their run defense is really good their pass defense is bad the falcons are going to be underdogs on the road here or like not on the road but overseas i really like this matchup and this is more of a troll stat i'm gonna be honest but we'll also show this shout out dalton kate's friend um that i've had in this space for a while kyle pitts averages in games outside of the united states Nine catches, 119 yards, a touchdown, 26.9 PPR points, and then his averages inside the U.S. are much lower. Pretty much it's just that Kyle Pitts, like the best game of his career was overseas. He now goes overseas again. You can buy into that narrative if you'd like. If not, I feel like the stats we showed before that uh, were pretty valid. Now, after that, we have our eighth must start. Now, this is if you're truly, truly down bad, like you're out here. And, you know, you're out here, like, maybe trying to decide between, like, Chigo Conquo and, like, Durham Smythe. And maybe you're looking at, like, even Tyler Conklin's of the world. I have a guy that if you're in, like, a really deep league and you need a tight end really bad, or let's say one of these tight ends, I don't know, God forbid, one of them can't go, right? Like, Sunday morning, surprise inactive, and you have to scour the waiver wire for a tight end. I got the recipe for you. Durham Smythe, I didn't write the plus 15, but we are 15 spots higher than consensus on Durham Smythe. Consensus has him at tight end 36. He's my tight end one or my tight end 21 this week at home versus the Raiders. The team total here, 27.5. They're going to score a ton of points, third most in the NFL, and the spread is minus five and a half. Now, the stat here is that with the loss of Mike Williams, the Chargers have increased their 12 personnel usage every week of the season where if we look at the utilization report from Dwayne McFarland here on fantasy life you can see 12 personnel so 12 personnel is just having two tight ends on the field right because Gerald Everett is the tight end one uh on this team but Donald Palmer is very much getting involved here 
Every week, they've increased their 12 personnel usage all over the 36% last week, and that's with Mike Williams getting hurt mid-game. You can expect this to sort of flirt with 40% this week, which is really, really high. And then on top of that, Donald Parham is a legit red zone weapon where they are subbing him in in the red zone to get these end zone targets. And when we're talking about tight ends, it's just whoever's catching touchdowns. Donald pa uh, Parham right now is top five in end zone targets with three tied with Dawson Knox behind just Pat Fryermuth and Travis Kelsey. And we then have the Raiders defense that is one of eight NFL teams right now to allow two or more touchdowns to opposing tight ends. So you have a nice little spot here where if you're down bad, you need a tight end in a deeper league, if it's a 14 team or 16 team or two tight end league, something among those lines or things are just really tough. I really, really, really like Donald Parham this week. Again, if you're down bad at tight end, I think Donald Parham can get started this week. Now that is going to do it for us today. Again, this format's still a work in progress. Um, I, I, I wanted to make sure that the players I brought, I could have brought more than eight, but I want to make sure that the players I brought were well-researched and were actually guys that I was higher on than consensus. I think next week we might add in guys that I'm lower on than consensus. We'll sort of see how this happens. We'll see what, how you guys like this video. Let me know if you have any uh, recommendations for me. I will say I wish I had, like the, it's not the prettiest in the world, right? Like these uh, things where I usually have like the sleeper headshots, but I feel like if I added headshots here, it would just be too much information everywhere. So let me know. If you guys enjoyed this, anything that I could sort of do to improve this format. Uh, and that's really it. I'll also say, if you're out there in a state that has Pick'em on Underdog Fantasy, make sure you check it out. I made a little Pick'em based on this video where the Pat Mahomes is a special one. So that's just over 0 0.5 total yards. So, or higher than 0 0.5 total yards. That's an instant W. Then you just have higher lowers in Underdog's Pick'em, which is, they just put out projections. You do higher or lower. You string them all together. Like this one right here is one, two, three, four, five hires. And if you get all of them right, you 20x your money. So I liked Patrick Mahomes higher than 0.5 total yards. Again, that's just kind of a special they do every week to kind of just give you a, a W uh, right out the gate. Then you have Jalen Waddle higher than 8.95 fantasy points. I love that. Nico Collins over 8.25 fantasy points. I love that. Marquise Brown over four receptions. We talked about him being a PPR god this week. And then Kyle Pitts over 32 and a half receiving yards. I actually absolutely love this. I don't have pick him in Jersey, but I'm going to find a way to sort of cook up a parlay uh, on a sports book. That's something similar to that. Um, now, if you're new to Underdog Fantasy and you want to try out Pick'em for this weekend, make sure you check out Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code RON. They will match your deposit up to $500. That is only active until October 4th. So if you want to get in, get in now. Check out the Pick'em specials. I'll have a link in the description in the comment section down below. You click it. It'll take you to Underdog Fantasy. It'll use promo code RON and it'll match your deposit, deposit up to $500. So with that being said, if you enjoy, make sure you down below. Subscribe. Leave a like, leave a comment as well, how you feel about this format, what I can do moving forward, how we feel about it, all of that good stuff. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one.